We all know that Apple's working on the revolutionary Apple glasses that have the potential to change our lives entirely. The idea of putting these glasses on and then instantly enhancing your life by having overlays on top of your real world is something that we've only seen in sci-fi movies and games, but it is real and it will be here very soon. Now, this thing, but you know, the actual Apple glasses. Now, we've made plenty of videos on the Apple glasses over the years. We've also made a couple of our own concepts and even got our hands on a few products that you can buy today that can give you a really good idea of how the Apple glasses will be like in the future. But in this video, I wanna give you guys a summary and also an update on all the leaks regarding what you can expect from Apple's AR slash VR future. And the first thing that you should know is that Apple is not working on one AR slash VR headset, but two. The Apple Glasses is one of them, and the other one is a mixed reality headset similar in looks to the Oculus, sorry, the Meta Quest 2. I gotta get used to that. This video is sponsored by Dreamy Tech and their brand new DreamyBot Z10 Pro. It features an advanced LiDAR navigation system, a front 3D camera for avoiding objects such as cables, a long-lasting 2.5 hour battery, an intuitive app with voice control, and it also features a self-emptying bin. Oh, and it even supports mopping. It's literally the all-in-one robot vacuum, and if you use the link below, you also get 25% off until the 28th of November. And now, Back to the video. I want to start off with a mixed reality headset as this is the one that the majority of you will care about the most. And the reason for this being the release date, which according to Ming Chikuo, could be as early as late next year. In a recent report, he stated that mass production will begin in Q4 2022, which means that we could see this mixed reality headset announced at the September 2022 event alongside the iPhone 14. Keep this thought in mind as we'll come back to it. However, the actual release date won't be until November or December or even early 2023. This is another release window that Ming Chikuo has reported. Oh, and this isn't just coming from Ming Chikuo, Morgan Stanley analysts have also reported that Apple's headset is beginning to mirror the period before the launch of the very first Apple Watch. By this they mean that Apple already has a large collection of AR and VR patents on everything from design to input methods to UI, just like they started to imagine before the Apple Watch launched. Mark Gurman also referenced 2022 as a potential release year for this new mixed reality headset. But okay, now that we know when the release date might be, you're all probably wondering how is this thing going to look like? Well, according to the information, uh, this is how it's going to look like. And it looks weird, I know. <laughs> but it's apparently the closest thing we have to the real deal. So the information sketched is based on actual images of a prototype that they had allegedly seen. Antonio De Rosa created a render based on the sketch, which does give us a better idea of how Apple's mixed reality headset would look like in reality. On the front, we have this curved glass visor that contains the two 8K displays. And I know 8K seems like way too good to be true, but this is what CNET reported back in their original 2018 report. This is what the information has also reported in 2021. And Mark Gurman has also reported that the headset would have much higher resolution displays than the competition. Of course, that when using such a headset, the image would be heavily magnified. So the more resolution you have, the more immersive the entire experience will be. And I gotta say, even on this Meta Quest 2, yes, I finally got the name right, uh, that has a resolution of 1832 by 1920 per eye, which by the way is one of the highest on a VR headset display today, I can easily distinguish individual pixels, which is very distracting. Apple's implementation should fix this issue. Now on this visor, you can see a couple of cameras, which would be used for tracking the environment as well as tracking your own hands. Ming Chiko said that the headset would have 15 individual cameras. However, I cannot really see 15 from the sketch or even from this render here. Speaking of tracking, the headset's lenses are set to support eye tracking. This is so that instead of rendering the entire image in 8K, which would be extremely demanding for the system, it would only render the portion of the display that your eyes are looking at. Pretty clever. We do have something similar on this Quest 2 already. However, this will always render the middle of the image the sharpest rather than the part of the image 
that you're looking at. Ming Chico reported that iris scanning is also coming as well in order to enable support for Apple Pay. And I do believe that this could also give us multi-user support, which would be really cool, especially on a device like this that you would likely pass around for others to experience it too. The visor then has this soft fabric mesh that's supposed to make it more comfortable, which both Information and Ming Chico have reported on. And uh, the headset is held in place by the silicone band, which does actually look extremely similar to the Apple Watch bands. But I think the most surprising thing about a headset itself would be its weight. So this Quest 2 right here is 503 grams heavy. This might seem like a lot, but this is actually one of the lightest VR headsets out there. However, according to Kuo, some prototypes that Apple has are just 200 to 300 grams, with Apple even looking to reduce the weight further to just 100 to 200 grams in the final version. That's, that's pretty hard to believe, especially when you consider that uh, this headset will also have a battery and you know actual tech inside rather than just an enclosure. But okay, what about features? What will you be able to do with such a device? And also, what does a mixed reality headset even mean? Well, mixed reality is essentially a headset that can do both augmented reality and virtual reality. The closest example to that would be this uh, Oculus MetaQuest 2. MetaQuest 2, yes, which has a couple of cameras for tracking as you can tell, but the thing is, if you enable a pass-through, you can basically see the world around you and overlay certain AR elements on top of it, which is really cool. So in terms of what you'll be able to do with Apple's headset, the possibilities are basically endless. You'll be able to play games in VR, experience different worlds and visit different places, as well as overlay screens and data on top of your real life and AR to make your life better and easier. Quo says that his headset would integrate heavily with Apple's services, specifically Apple TV Plus and Apple Arcade, with spatial audio also being supported by both the built-in speakers as well as any AirPods that you connect to it. Interaction with a headset would mostly be done via AR gestures, with full hand tracking being supported for things such as inputting text using a floating keyboard in the air. This is something that Mark Gurman and the information have also reported on, and Apple even has their own patent that shows this. So by the looks of it, this headset won't require any controller as all the interaction would be done by just using your hands. And the main use cases that Apple sees with this headset are gaming, streaming video, as well as video conferencing. Not too sure how they would implement video conferencing as the cameras would not be able to see our face, so it would be interesting to see how Apple approaches this. But anyway, all of this sounds way too good to be true, right? So what's the catch? Well, according to a September report from the information, Apple's mixed reality headsets would require a constant connection to your iPhone, unlike something like the MetaQuest 2, which works on its own. We've heard about this many times before, but we just haven't had any recent reports that solidified this. Until now. The reason why you'll need your iPhone nearby is because it will act as a central hub for running all of those games and then sending the data through video streams to the headset. And the reason why Apple decided to do it this way is because, according to Ming-Chi Kuo, Apple is really focused on having a design that looks good and is also comfortable for extended periods of time. And if the headset were to do all the processing by itself, it would also need a bigger battery, which would add more weight and hence affect the comfortability. Now, at the beginning of the video, I briefly showed you the DreamyBot Z10 Pro, and now I want to go a bit more in-depth and show you why this is honestly the most advanced robot vacuum that I've ever used. And that's coming from someone who's used the top models from the most well-known brands. First, it has a self-emptying bin that can hold up to 65 days of dust. Second, it features an advanced 3D camera system with lasers on the front, which allows the Z10 Pro to automatically avoid cables, shoes, and other objects on the floor. It managed to clean our almost 2,000 square foot office by not even getting stuck once. And trust me when I say that, we have a lot of cables here. Third, it features a mop so that the front of the robot vacuums while the back mops your floors. And four, the app is honestly amazing. It automatically maps your house in real time so that you can easily add no-go lines as soon as it goes where it shouldn't. We can also add no mopping zones, name the rooms, and so much more. Check it out by using the link below and also get a 25% discount until the 28th of November. And now, 
back to the video. Now, this doesn't mean that a headset would just be a screen, of course. According to the information, it would also have its own SOC, but quite a low-end one, so similar to an Apple Watch chip, as well as some dedicated chips for video streaming, video decoding, and video encoding. The SOC is said to be custom-made by TSMC, and there will be some support for some sort of basic functionality when the iPhone is not connected to the headset. But this functionality is said to be very limited as the headset would lack any sort of neural engine, which Apple's 3D tracking would apparently heavily rely on. So my guess is that without the iPhone nearby, it might be able to put you in a 3D environment, but you won't be able to just move around, but rather only view it. So similar to the Google Cardboard and many of the other VR headsets that we have right here, uh, where you used to just slide a smartphone in, and uh, of course the mobility was quite limited. I think it's probably going to be great for when you're traveling or when you just want to take a quick nap in a different environment, but for the most part, you'll want to use this with your iPhone connected. According to Ming-Chi Kuo, both the iPhone 14 and this new mixed reality headset would support Wi-Fi 6E, which is what uh, they would both use to send the data between them. This means that in order to use this mixed reality headset, you would also need to buy an iPhone 14. But if you think that this is bad news, wait until you hear about the price. AG Times reports that it would cost more than $2,000, to which Mark Gurman said that it would indeed be pricey and it would indeed launch as early as 2022. And not only that, but Bloomberg reported back in February that Apple would only ship around 250,000 units during the first year, which would translate to only one headset being available per store per day during the first year. So similar to the Mac Pro, in this regard. So even though this mixed reality headset would be super cool as you'll be able to play immersive games on it and even use it to enhance your work, it will be crazy expensive at first and very difficult to find. Something interesting that caught my eye though was how uh, when Ming-Chi Kuo reported the uh, Wi-Fi 6E availability, he also said that it will be present on head-mounted displays uh, in 2022, 2023 and 2024. Now it's unclear if he was referring to the general market or uh, to Apple. But if he was referring to only Apple, it means that they already have plans on releasing yearly updated versions of this mixed reality headset, um, which would eventually improve its availability and also lower the price. Okay, now let's talk about the Apple glasses. So unlike the mixed reality headset, which will be both an AR and VR device, the Apple glasses will only be AR. And these are the ones that you'll be able to wear on the streets as they are said to look like, you know, an actual pair of glasses, unlike these things, which um, look a bit weird, video about these right here, by the way. Now, the actual design is said to look like the Ray-Bans Wayfarers, or uh, the glasses that Tim Cook is wearing, according to John Prosser. So they will indeed look like generic glasses, just maybe with a slightly thicker frame. But even then, because of how small this frame is going to be and how little room Apple is going to have for things such as batteries and chips, they would be more limited in terms of their capabilities. They won't have 8K displays, but instead, they would use these very tiny Sony Micro OLED displays. Not to be confused with Micro LED displays, that's a totally different technology. The displays are incredibly tiny, 0.5 inches in size, with a resolution of 1280 by 960, but even that is actually more than enough. As opposed to the mixed reality headset, which has two full screen displays, the Apple glasses would only have this tiny screen which would sit on top of the lenses. So kind of similar to how Google's Glass works. But unlike Google's Glass, they will support AR as they are said to have cameras for tracking, not just the environment, but also your hand gestures. And just like the mixed reality headsets, they will also connect uh, to your iPhone which will act as the brains for the glasses. The Sony Micro OLED display supports 1000 nits of brightness, a 100,000 to 1 contrast ratio, and most impressively, a response time of just 0.01 milliseconds, which is the lowest that I've ever seen. So this should make it indistinguishable from hand movements in real life. Both Ross Young and Michi Kuo, as well as the Japanese publication Nikan Kogyo, have reported on this exact model of display for the Apple glasses. But probably the best news is the price, which is said to be much lower at around $500, uh, with Apple also offering prescription lenses for those who need them. But the bad news is that they won't be available until 2025, according to Michi Kuo, followed by Apple's AR contact lenses around 2030. So we're still a couple of years away from this AR future, but 
I do 100% believe that Apple can pull this off if we take a look at how far they have come with ARKit already on iOS. It's just super impressive what it's capable of with real-time shadows and real-time reflections being cast from the real world onto virtual objects. I also think that this mixed reality headset is definitely the most exciting one, at least for now, since according to multiple sources, it is coming next year or in early 2023 at the latest. Okay, so right when we were finishing up this video, ming Chico released an updated report with some game-changing details on both the headset and the glasses. So according to Kuo, the mixed reality headset will no longer need to stream the data from the iPhone, meaning that you won't actually require an iPhone 14 anymore as the headset itself will be able to process everything thanks to a high-end chip that would be similar to Apple's M1 in performance, and then a lower-end chip would handle the 3D tracking. This does make me a bit concerned about its weight. Like, I don't see how Apple can have a headset at 200 grams with a chip as powerful as the M1. Like, even if they don't have any active cooling, it will still need a larger battery uh, to be able to power the headset for a few hours. But not requiring an iPhone 14, will indeed make it more accessible, so at least that's the good news. Kuo then stated that the mixed reality headset would have two 4K displays rather than two 8K displays, which makes it far more believable, especially if this thing is about to come in uh, 2022 or 2023. Uh, Kuo also had an update on the release date, by the way, which he now predicts to be in late 2022, as he did not mention early 2023 at all in this report. Now, the weird thing though, is that Kuo said that these 4K displays would be Sony Micro OLED displays, so same type that we've seen reported for the glasses, only in 4K rather than 960p, which honestly makes me think that the reports referring to the glasses having Micro OLED displays were actually referring to the headset uh, and some wires got crossed internally. As it makes way more sense for the glasses to have a display that covers the entirety of the lenses for an immersive experience. The mixed reality headset would zoom in on the micro OLED display anyways, as that's how VR headsets work. And especially if Apple's AR glasses are only coming in 2025, even that resolution seems crazy low. So yeah, I think some wires definitely got crossed here. But yeah, at the end of the day, the mixed reality headset is coming next year, which is extremely exciting. And then eventually 2025, around there, that's when we will be getting the Apple AR glasses, which I don't think that's achievable. What Apple's trying to do with the glasses today, I don't know, I feel like the lenses are the trickiest thing to achieve with those glasses and we just don't have the technology yet. But by 2025, we might. Anyway, definitely subscribe for more Apple AR videos. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Check out the previous ones too. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Zenough Tech, signing out. Cheers.